Welcome into this message. I want to give you a warm virtual hug because I am really glad that you are here. And I say that every single message for a reason. I say that because I know that there's a ton of other things that you could be doing. You could be scrolling social media, you could be watching TV, you could be on the front, on the phone with a friend, talking to someone about just things that aren't as important as pressing in and leaning into the word of God and what God has for you right now. And I'm gonna tell you about the Lord. There are some of you who maybe you weren't even looking for this message, but it just continued to show up in front of you or maybe someone sent it to you, but that's how God works. It doesn't matter if you're not looking for it. There are times where the Lord wants to get something to you so urgently. This is how much he cares about you and this is how much he loves you that he will invade your space. He will invade your life to get that message to you. And I'm telling you, for those of you who maybe you've seen something come up in front of you a lot, maybe it's a message like this, maybe it's a particular sign. This is for those of you who God is trying to literally give you a sign within the realm of the earth. There is nothing that you could do to escape it. I'm telling you that if you miss the first sign, God will just send another sign. If you miss the first message, God will send another teacher, another pastor, another minister, literally saying the same thing, but in a different way. And that is just how God flows and how he works when he's trying to get something across to you. That's actually the grace of God operating as well, because grace really just is an allotted period of time where God is extending to us to get things together, to flow in what it is he's called us to do, to make that decision, to take that next step. It's an allotted period of time. So when God is putting something in front of you, like a message like this, it is him not only extending grace to you, but him trying to really get a message to you. And that could be to set you free, to break some chains of, chains of bondage off you. That could be to give you literally the instructions for what you are to do next. So some of you, this may be an answer to prayer. Some of you, this may be something that sets you free. And I'm going to tell you just by what I'm going to be talking to you about today, and I say this by the Spirit of God, I'm going to tell you just by you listening to this message in its entirety and you staying to the end, sticking to it and allowing me to pray over you and coming into agreement with the word that is going forth. I'm telling you, many of you are going to leave this message today and I want you to email in a testimony or put it in the comments below, but we love to see it in the email as well. Many of you are going to leave this message today and you are going to change things in your life immediately. I'm talking about it, it's going to ignite something within you to where you say enough is enough and you make the necessary changes and you're going to know what it is because I speak by the Spirit of God and as I'm speaking and th many people can attest within the comments, there are hundreds of you who are literally given signs from God as I'm speaking. He's telling you, literally the Spirit of God, telling you what you need to do, the next step you need to take. He's giving you revelation. He's revealing things to you. He's giving you understanding. He's giving you knowledge. He's giving you wisdom. And this isn't anything that Shannon could do because I'm just the vessel, but it's the Spirit of God that moves through me to bear witness to your spirit, to uh, deliver the information to your mind and your heart in a way that you can understand. That is just how the Spirit of God works. It's dynamic, it's changing, and it's living and breathing in that way. So I know that many of you, as a result of this message, things are, you're going to do very specific actions that the Lord is going to reveal to you. And I want you to confirm it in the comments below, send your testimony and email. And as a result of your own obedience and your faithfulness, because I'm telling you, just listening to this message alone, it's not enough. It's not enough. Once you're done listening to this message, you have to take action. It's going to be by your own obedience and faithfulness to the Spirit of God, to the Lord, that changes are going to begin to happen in your life. So you hear the Word of God and then you take action and then change comes. You hear, I'm going to say that again because that's, that's this, that's a three-step process, I believe I just said. You hear the word of God, then you take action, and then change comes. But interestingly enough about that three-step process is that it has to come through someone who God has anointed to break it down in a way that you're not just hearing it, but you're also understanding it. Because I'm telling you, there are many people in the world who they don't even serve God. They don't serve God or maybe... It's not that they 
um, they don't serve anything, but they, they, they're even all the way left to where they're serving a false God and they could be speaking something. And yes, it does make sense. And yes, it, it is very intellectual. And yes, it, like I said, it does make sense, but they're not anointed to save that thing. They're not anointed by the spirit of God. The oil isn't there. And so you could hear someone who is in the world, someone who's serving a false God, literally read scripture to you. They could be reading from the Holy Bible of our God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but it doesn't land the way that it's supposed to. It's diluted. It's tainted. And so it's not going to impact your life or change your life in the way that it should because of the vessel. The vessel is dirty. The vessel is stained. And so God has to um, deliver the message through clean vessels. This is a whole other message all by itself. But I know many of you are going to see significant change in your life as a result of this message and your obedience and your faithfulness. So there are some people who will, and I want to make sure I'm saying this right, there are some people who, who will look at the children of God. We're not talking about those in the world because they're doing their own thing. We're, we're focusing on God's children. So there are people who are the children of God and they'll look at other of God's children, right? They'll look at God's children who are not them. Maybe they are blessed, maybe they're prosperous. And if you're not in that place, you can easily begin to think that it's something that it's not. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean by this. And I'm gonna also tell you how to get to that place. Because one, two things. One, you don't ever want to speak down on something that, or someone that you're wanting what's on their life. You're wanting God to do the same thing for you. Maybe they're not doing it the way that you would. Maybe they're not operating in it at the level of excellence that you would, but you want what's, what, you want what's on their life. You don't ever want to speak down on that person because God is still using them, right? God is still with them. Yes, you may do things differently, but they're still a child of God, just like you are. You always want to speak words of honor and give honor to that person. And the second thing is that when you look at people like that, or when people look at people like that, they're blessed and they're prosperous, they can easily begin to think that it's something that it's not. So to get to that place, I want to share with you all, um, and I'm going to read to you a scripture to, to really prove it to you. You have to get to a place to where your life means nothing to you. And when your life means nothing to you, that is when God will give you everything. So when you're looking at someone who has a lot, people can easily think it's something that it's not, meaning that they could look at that person and think that they find their value and things and this material world and uh, things that will just fade away with the passing of time, not knowing the actual heart of that person. But here's the thing about God. God knows the heart of every person. There's nothing you can hide from God. It doesn't matter if it's deep within the crevices of your heart. God will search it out and he'll find it. So there's nothing that anyone, not them, not you, any, it doesn't even matter if they don't serve God. There's nothing that you could hide from God. You may be able to even hide it from yourself if you lack that level of self-awareness, if you don't do self-reflection. But trust me, God sees it. God knows what's in your heart. God knows what's there, even if you don't know what's there. And so if you see someone who is prosperous, right, and they're living in the blessing of God, they have, they have life more abundantly. They're displaying the glory of God in a level that you may not have seen before. Trust me that God has already searched their heart. He doesn't need you to do it. He doesn't need us to do it. And so to get to that place, that person, and even you have to, you could write this down, has gotten to a place to where life means nothing to them. And you have to get to this place. This place to where your life means nothing to you. And when you get to that place, it's a posture of your heart, by the way, not your actions. Because there are many people who will go to the Lord on that day and they'll say, Lord, Lord, I've done all this in your name. I've done all of these wonderful works in your name. And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. And that's because there are people who think that they can show the Lord with their actions and their actions alone that their life means nothing to them by giving things away. Do you know there are people who are 
literally and willingly staying in a state of poverty because they believe that that's showing God that their life means nothing to them. It's a posture of your heart, not what you're doing. You could have everything in the world and still display within your heart that th those things don't have you, you have them. You could have everything in the, Solomon did. Solomon was the wealthiest man in the world. And he had such a heart of a servant that God said, okay, Solomon, I'm not just going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to make you very wealthy. It's a posture of the heart. And actually, taking a, taking a vow of poverty or taking a vow of saying that, you know, maybe you're just going to give everything away, not because your heart is pure, but because you're wanting to just show God that your life means nothing to you, it is actually idolizing that state of poverty, saying that because you're in this state, because you've given everything away, that that makes you better than people who have much resources, who have an abundant life from God. In fact, it does not. It is not. It's all a posture of the heart. It doesn't matter what you have or what you do not have. So, and I'm going to prove it to you in scripture. When your life means nothing to you, that is when God will give you everything because he can trust you with it. He can trust that you're not going to idolize these things. He can trust that you're not going to idolize whatever it is he gives you, but instead you're going to actually use that to display the glory of God back to the world. You're going to use that to magnify the sign to literally point back to him. How did you get to this level in life? How did you get to this place in life? God did it. How did you receive all of these resources to be such a huge blessing to other people in a very short period of time? And I'm talking about accelerated. God did it. It is only by God. Then it moves them and it pushes them to want to go deeper in God, to want to serve God to want to go deeper into his words, you want to build a relationship with him. You become a large sign pointing back to God and it's all a partial of your heart. But I'm telling you, if you're doing anything that does not give God glory, but it gives you glory, God will see it. He'll see it within your heart. So I want to read to you John chapter 12, verse 25. And it says, those who love their life will lose their life. It says, those who love their lives will lose them. And those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Now, the interesting thing about this scripture, about John chapter 12, verse 25, is that many people take this scripture out of context, along with many other scriptures, but that's another message for another day. But we're focusing on this scripture in particular today. Many people take this scripture out of context, and they think that everyone is supposed to take a vow of lack and of poverty. And I'm not just talking about monetary here. I'm talking about in general, meaning instead of keeping yourself up and living a life of excellence, meaning, and it's beyond what the physical eye can see, but I'm talking about doing things with diligence, being detailed with things, keeping a certain standard with the way that you live your life. Many people read this scripture and they take it to mean that you're supposed to, as a Christian, take a vow of poverty, take a vow of lack, and then wear very unkept clothes, keep your life unkept because they're trying to send a message to God, but God can't hear them. The heart is all wrong. So to not misinterpret this scripture, it's really saying that we have to be obedient to the point of putting it all on the line for God. And that is what it takes. It means you're not afraid to give it all up for him if that's what it takes. It means that if God were to pour a ton of resources into your life and then he said, give it all back to me, you would do it because God said so. Because your heart isn't in those things. Your heart is in the Lord. It says those who love their lives, meaning everything that comes with your life, your lifestyle, your home, your clothes, the relationships you have, your car, whatever it may be, those who love their life or their lifestyle will lose it. And those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. It means it doesn't matter what you have, who you are, what, I mean, who you are as in your identity in this world, because we're not supposed to base it in anything in this world anyway. 
it doesn't matter what you have, you would put it all on the line for God if that is what it took, if that's what God asked for. You're not afraid to give it up for him. And many people, like I said, they don't understand this scripture. They take it to mean that we're, that we're not supposed to live life more abundantly, but that is in direct, that mindset and that view of the scripture is in direct contrast with the word of God, where the word of God says we are to have life and have it more abundantly. So no, the scripture does not mean to take about poverty. But what it's really saying is that when your life means nothing to you, that is when God will say, that's the person who has the heart that I'm looking for. Now I will give you everything. Now the gates of heaven are open to you. Now I authorize you to do this because I can trust you with it. The heart posture is the heart of a servant. And John, and that's actually uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, that it tells us the will of God is to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. So that's really the ultimate sign that you transform into the likeness of the Son, Jesus Christ, is when you're able to say, Lord, I put it all on the line for you, even my life if I have to. If it takes me putting my, if it takes me laying my life down, I will do that. I would do that. It doesn't matter what I have. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what home you live in. It doesn't matter how many friends you have. It doesn't matter what car you have, what your clothes. It does not matter what lifestyle you built for yourself here on earth. And yes, all of it's given to you by God. All glory to God. But you put it, you give it, you put it all on the line for God. Even if it comes down to your very life. I'm talking about this is the heart that Job had. He literally lost everything. He literally lost everything and still committed himself to being obedient to God and serving the Lord. This is the kind of heart that God's looking for. And if I'm being honest with you, it not very few people have it. Very few people have it. I'm not even going to pretend like majority of Christians are like this. But not you. I'm glad that you're here. Because you being under this ministry, listening to this message, it lets me know and it sends a message to God that you are someone who's going to continue to press in and that, and I'm talking about press in to having a deep, meaningful relationship with God because we don't talk about surface level things on this ministry channel. We don't do that. Now, there are some ministries who do that and there's a place for that. Praise God, because there are some people who need that, but we don't talk about that here. And I know that it's a stretching to even be here and continue to press into these messages, but it, because you're allowing yourself to be stretched in this way, it sends a message to God that your heart is in the right place. And if you commit yourself to pressing in deeper in the things of God and strengthening your relationship with him and allowing yourself to be stretched and, and changing the posture of your heart to align with that of Jesus, I'm telling you, there is nothing that will be withheld from you. Because anything you ask for is going to align with the word of God anyway. You would never pray amiss. So that is the ultimate sign that you have transformed into the likeness of the son, Jesus Christ. You know, it's Jesus himself that said no one took his life from him. He said, no one has the power to take my life. I lay it down. I'm going to read that to you. It's John chapter 10, verse 18. It's, it was the posture of his heart. He said, no one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. Does God have to pry things out of your hand? Or do you give it up because you want to? And here's the thing. God would never... <laughs> here's the thing. God would never allow you... Or let me put it... I want to make sure I'm phrasing it right. God would never bring you to a place that's so low and never return it all back to you double or more than double. We see this happen with, with Job, right? It, it, he's just a good father in that way. All he wants to know is, would you do it? All he wants to know is the posture of your heart. We see the same test happen with Abraham where he comes out and he says, no, 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 no. You don't have to sacrifice your son. You actually don't have to do this. It was the testing of the posture of his heart. God just wants to see, would you do it? What are you willing to give up? What are you, are you willing to put it all on the line for him? The line for him? 
and it's a posture of your heart because he, if he has to pry it out of your hand or, he, or if he has to consistently keep you low to the point where you say, okay, God, all right, I'll serve you because you've stripped me of everything. No, you have to continue to keep that heart posture that if he asks, okay, yes, whatever you want, whatever, whatever you want. And there's a saying that I always say, I always tell this to myself, and I'll share this with you and I'll finish reading John chapter uh, 10, verse 18. There's a saying that I say, and I always say it within myself, and I may not say it out loud sometimes, but I always say, if I, let me backtrack, because the Lord has brought me a mighty long way, praise God. You know, I've been in a very low place, and the Lord has raised me up from that low place, and I'm still, this is still very the very beginning, by the way, I'm still scratching the surface, but there is a saying I say to myself, that even if, and I want you to hear me when I say this, even if today I lost everything by one command of God for it to happen and be that way. Okay, Lord, your will be done. Just don't take your word from me. Just leave me with, leave me with my Bible, anyone. Don't take your word from me. Okay, Lord, your will be done. It's the posture of the heart. And it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you display. It's all hidden within the heart of a man. And so you have to continually keep yourself in this place. John chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus says, no one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. He wanted to. He said, I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it up again. I received the command from my father. It's this level of obedience that we see Daniel had, and I'm going to read to you, I'm going to prove that to you in Daniel chapter 3. It's this level of obedience that Job had. It's this level of, of obedience that Abraham had. And we see this repeatedly throughout scripture to where the Lord said, okay, because you don't love your life, I'm going to give you everything. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 through 18 says, and I'm reading from the KJV, if our God... The one we serve, I need some water really quick. Okay. If our God, the one we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of flaming fire and from your power, your majesty, then let him rescue us. But the power is in the but. The power is in the but. He could have left it at that. This, after the, after the but, we see the posture of the heart. He says, but if he doesn't, know this for certain. There's no if, ands, and buts about it. Know this for certain, your majesty. Your majesty. <laughs> we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. The power is in the but. If he doesn't, if God doesn't deliver you from that situation, I'm talking about wherever you are and he will. Oh, he absolutely, every time he comes through for you. But if he doesn't, do you trust the Lord, right? Do you put him above that thing? Do you put him above your own life, your own life? If God says, lay your life down for him today, would you do it? The posture is in the heart. And he would always come, he would always deliver you because we serve a God who delivers. He will always provide for you because we serve a God who provides. He will always come through for you. But do you trust him and serve him over that thing that he's going to provide? Do you trust him and serve him over that sickness that you've made your identity? Do you trust him and serve him over money that can only buy you things that deteriorate and decrease in value over time anyway. That will pass away. And I mean, literally come to nothing. It's temporary with the passing of time. So to solely rely on the Lord to the point of if need be, and he'll never request this of you, giving up your entire life by and on command, it is a strength, it's not a weakness. It is a strength, it is not a weakness. 
I'm telling you, Jesus, for Jesus to go to the cross and say absolutely nothing, and they brought him before literally, literally the court, what do you have to say to yourself? They're saying you're a false say for yourself. <laughs> They're calling you a false prophet. They're saying you're not really the son of God. What do you have to say for yourself? He could have taken that moment to try to vindicate himself, to try to prove that he was really the one that the father sent. But it took an incredible amount of strength to hold his peace and go to the cross. And were they wrong? Absolutely. Did he feel the need to prove them wrong? No. He just simply said on the cross, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And he got the upper hand in the end because it always happens that way for a child of God. It always, it always happens that way. It's the only way that it could go. It's, it, it takes an incredible amount of strength to lay it all on the line for the Lord because not everyone can do it. It's actually, it's really hard. It's really hard to keep that heart, that heart posture. Does it come easier over time? Absolutely. And then even then, you have to constantly remind yourself that if in an instant God took it all, took it all away, it would mean nothing to you. It mean nothing. It just sucked. It would mean nothing to you. And so, what are you willing to lay down? Because I can guarantee you. That if you're in a place right now, like you look over the landscape of your life and there are some things you don't like, like you're wanting God to bring you, you know, uh, out of poverty. You know, you're wanting God to bring new connections into your life, like divine connections, people he has sent into your life. You're wanting God to help you with your body, your temple. Maybe that's lose weight. Maybe that is... Some of you want to gain weight. Some of you are wanting to get rid of sickness, right? And I'm talking about sicknesses that you can actually actually control within the natural. But now it's gotten to a point where you're needing God to put his supernatural ability on it. Because it's gotten way out of your control. Can you do that? Yes. But I'm telling you that if that's you, you look over the landscape of your life, whatever that may be, and there's things that you don't like, you know it's not aligning with the word of God. There is something in that area that, he's, that he wants you to lay down that you're holding on to. You're holding on to it for dear life. Whether that be, you know, if you're someone who wants God to transform you in the area of your finances, you're wanting God to help you um, move into a place where you're no longer struggling financially. I'm telling you that there's something in terms of money and I know that word scares a lot of people, They're, especially Christians. There's something when it comes to money that God's wanting you to give up. You know, people who struggle with poverty are the hoarders of money the most. They, they hoard money the most because they think they're going to lose it. You could never lose things in the kingdom of God. It all, it's always returned back to you sevenfold. So I'm telling you that if you're, and I'm going to probably irritate some people but I can only speak what the Lord wants me to speak if you're struggling in the area of money I can promise you that God wants you to bless people with money he wants you to give money away it's an act of faith and it's an act of trust and of course do it as the Lord leads but it's you sending a large sign to the kingdom of God with your faith God I trust you and I'm going to give you a small little testimony from my life. You know, this is when I, for many years, I struggled financially. And it was during those years, because my, the posture of my heart, back to the posture of your heart again, it was during those years, and even now, I give more away now. I would have $2 to my name and give that away. But there are people who will have that same amount and they hold on to it because they, their perspective is distorted, it's warped. I talked about that. And the last message where I said, look in the mirror and how God, how the enemy wants to change how you see things. If your perspective is warped and you're looking at things with rose colored glasses on, you're not looking at it the way that, and from, from the perspective of God, I'll just put it out there like that. And I encourage you to go listen to that message. It's a powerful one. But if you only have, and I'm using an example, $2 to your name and you're holding onto those $2 for dear life. It's you saying without actually saying, God, I don't believe you're a God of abundance. I don't believe that you have unlimited resources. I don't believe that 
that you will always provide for me. So I'm holding on to this two dollars because you're not going to give me more. I'm not. I'm never going to see the provision of God. So I'm holding on to this for dear life because you are not a God of your word. We don't glorify lies from the enemy. We don't do that. So when I barely had anything, I would give that away because I had faith that my whatever I had, it didn't come from this world anyway. It came from my father who is in heaven. And even now, I still give way more away than anything I gave away before because God looks at the posture of the heart and he says, okay, because you don't love these things, I'm going to give you everything. It works the same way with food. If you are someone who's struggling with your temple or um, your health in terms of you want to lose weight or you want to gain weight, are you holding on to food because you don't think that God is a God of abundance and that you're going to always have food? There are some people, and I know that I'm in some of you all's neighborhood. Some of you may say, oh, you're reading my mail. But <laughs> I know that there's some people who, if you come from a place of lack and maybe you know, you aren't used to having that much food and I get it. A lot of times it can become easy to want to eat a lot. And this isn't even what my message was about, but I feel led to go there. A lot of times you could want to eat a lot because you think that there's not going to be any food left. You think it's going to go somewhere. It's not going anywhere. And if it does go somewhere, God will just multiply it back to you. It will continue to come into your storehouse it will continue to flood into your home until you have more than enough. You're just giving it away because that's how God works. But as you're hoarding on to food and you're continuing to stuff yourself, it's causing literal, in some of you, physical sickness. So what God is wanting you to give up in this case is give up some of your food. Give some away. Some you don't need. The unhealthy food, throw it away. It's the same thing for those of you who are struggling in the area of your relationship, meaning people who come into your life, they're not people sent from God. You already know this. They're people who is probably sent from the enemy. I'm telling you, if you look throughout your life at your friends, some of you even family members, there are some people in your life that God is wanting you to lay down. He's wanting you to give those people up to him. He's wanting you to walk away from those people. So look over the landscape of your, of your life at things that you do not like, that do not align with the word of God. And I'm telling you in that same exact area, there is something God wants you to lay down willingly. If God, God doesn't want to pry it out of your hands because he wants to know that you, by the own posture of your heart, has decided to give it up. And it's by that act of faith alone that God says he will give you everything. So what are you willing to lay down? What are you willing to give up? I want you to think about this. And actually, I know, as I said in the beginning of this message, that the Lord is already revealing that to you. And it's by your act of obedience and faithfulness that things are going to be to shift in your life. And it's going to be quick. I'm talking about it's going to happen so quick. It's going to literally blow your mind. And I want you to not forget, here's the only thing that I require of you, not required, I, I, that word is very aggressive. I don't wanna use require. Here's the only thing that I would love that you would do as that happens is send in a testimony through the email. We love to read it, all praise and glory to God. So um, I'm, I wanna say a prayer over you and then I wanna declare uh, some things over you. And then I will let you go. But I want to say a closing prayer. I ask that you come into agreement with me on this. Lord, I thank you for your children, your beautiful children that you've sent to this message. I know that if they're here and they're listening to this, that you have something special for them. You're trying to take them somewhere spe uh, special. And it is a place that is unique for them. It is a path that is unique for them. It is a place where you have already gone before them and prepared the way to make their path straight. You've already carved out a space for them. When they get there, there's already room for them at the table. It's already prepared for them. And yes, it may be in the presence of their enemies, but you are with them, Lord God. You have already postured their heart 
after they have already chosen to be faithful and obedient to you, even more into a place of humility, Lord God. But it takes them themselves having first that willingness to lay it all down for you if that's what it takes, to put it all on the line for you if that's what it takes. So we thank you for this word. We thank you for everything that you have for them. We thank you for everything you're doing in their life. We thank you for all of the people who are attached to them that will be affected by the glory that you are getting ready to display through them. And I ask that you will stay with them, continue to increase them in authority, to continue to increase them in, in influence, continue to increase them in their anointing, Lord God. Let it pour on them, pour the, the, uh, your oil on them. So much to the point, Lord God. And you said in your word also, I believe it's Psalms 23, you anoint our head with oil, our cup run over. Let that be for your children who are listening to this message. Let their cup run over with the anointing oil of God so that when they step into whatever it is you have for them, that it flows. It is easy. It is saturated with the grace of God. There will be no friction. There will be no delay. There will be no roadblocks. Shut every door right now to the enemy. Every voice that is not your voice, we cancel it right now. Any words that were spoken out over your children that does not align with the word of God, it dissipates into thin air now. It comes to nothing now. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I want to say that you are not lost. You're not lost. You have been found by the word and presence of God today. There's some of you who came to this message today and you were lost right? You didn't know what God wanted for you. You were in confusion. Maybe there's chaos in your life, but I'm telling you that you're not lost. Really receive this. Believe this because it's true. I only speak what's true from the word and spirit of God. You were not lost. Stop letting the enemy tell you that you're lost and that you're confused. We, I cancel any double mind. It is now no more instability in your life. You're standing on solid ground. You're standing on the rock, which is the Lord. You're not lost. You're found today by the word and the presence of God. You may not know where you are. God knows where you are. Literally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. He knows exactly where you are. Use the word of God to see. So I want to decree and declare right now that the word of God pierces through every fog of confusion in your mind now with the blinding light of his glory. And I speak right now, Lord, we, we ask that you bring your spirit into wherever they are. Let it flow into their home. Let it flow into their car, their atmosphere, wherever they are, Lord God. And I ask that you will let your light of revelation blind the enemy and illuminate their path from within them so that they can see it in their mind's eye. They know exactly where it is you want them to go. Any confusion or double-mindedness dissipates into nothing. So I speak clarity of mind over you in the name of Jesus. I speak wholeness of your mind, body, and soul. It's coming into alignment now with the word of God. Let every void be sealed by the love, presence, power, and light of God. Everything that creeps in the darkness of your soul, I call it out not now in the name of Jesus, and I take authority over it. You have to go in the name of Jesus. So I just want to thank you, Lord God, for this word. I thank you for sending your servants to this message. I thank you for everything that you're doing in their life. I thank you for even everything you're doing through this ministry because I know that it's nothing I could ever do. I know it's nothing I, I, I could ever do in my own might or power. I thank you for the revelation you're sending to your servants now. I thank you for the visions you're giving them of their future, where they're going, where they're headed now. In the name of Jesus. And I just want to ask that you, you know, I'm speaking to you right now. <laughs> We're tuning into this message. I just want to ask that you will, you know, if God shows you something, hold on to it. Capture that vision. Hold on to it. Write it down if you have to, because that's, that's what you're going to attach your faith to. Whatever God has shown you. When you attach your faith to that thing and you hold on to it, you do not let go of it. I'm telling you, it has no choice. And I'm talking about, you speak life over it too. It has no choice but to materialize into your world. No choice. So, 
I know this message has blessed many of you. I know that it, it, it's set many of you free. I know that many of you are going to see and some of you immediate change in your life as a result of your own obedience and your faithfulness. And so I want to leave you with that. I do want to open it up for you all to plant seed and really good ground. This is the, I, don't want to, I keep wanting to say the best, but it's not the best because there are tons of other ministries out there where it's really good ground that I sow into. But I will say that it's a really good place to sow into because this place, this ministry, this atmosphere is anointed for increase. And I'm telling you that there are many of you, and I, I wanted to say this in the last message, but God's bringing it to my spirit now. There are many of you who think to yourself, okay, well, if I plant a seed into the ground, how is God going to get a harvest back to me if you don't have a job, right? If you don't have a means to make an income. But that's very small thinking. That's thinking through the means of how this world system works. And I'm asking you by the spirit of God to open up your mind outside of it. Begin to move yourself into the realm of the spirit to, to come up to God's perspective and see how he operates. God doesn't need a job to get resources to you. God doesn't need really anything to get resources to you. He will create a way. He will, That's actually, and I have, I have this written down here. There's actually Isaiah 43, 19, where the word of God tells you that he will create a way in the wilderness. He'll open up streams in the desert. You could be in a dry place. You could be in the driest place of your life. You put a seed in that ground, standing on the word of God, he will open up a stream for you in the desert. That's the God that we serve. He created the dirt. He, it doesn't matter. There's no place you could ever be in your life physically or financially or mentally where God cannot reach you with a harvest. So you have to take God outside of the box of our mind. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I'm telling you by the spirit of God, standing on the word of God, that if God is speaking to you to put a seed in the ground, that he will find a way, he will hunt you down, <laughs> find a way to multiply a harvest back to you because his word can never return back to him void. You are not, you could never be the one that God says, okay, this person has no way for me to get a harvest back to them. So this is the exception to the rule. You'll never be the exception to the rule. There is no exception to the rule when it comes to the word of God. And I know that I'm laughing because it's funny when you begin to think about it. It's comical actually, but that's, the, that's really what the ways of the enemy come to. It's funny when you begin to think of how the enemy tries to reason with us in our minds. You will never be the exception to the rule when it comes to the word of God. So if God is speaking to you about putting a seed in the ground and it's, very, it's a specific number, be obedient and be faithful. I'm telling you, there's something he's trying to get back to you and you would never be the exception to the rule. He will literally create a way to get it to you, resources, whatever it is that you are believing in God for. But it's according to your own faithfulness and obedience that it will be done. And so the link is below if the Lord is speaking to you about doing so. And there's also many other resources there that I'm talking about thousands of people have been blessed by at this point. There's our bestseller uh, devotional book, and there's so many testimonies that have came in as a result of people being obedient and grabbing that book. There's mentorship, there's courses. I want you to check it out in the description. I promise you by the spirit of God, and I can say this with confidence because it was literally by God that I was able to create or put into place any of those resources for you below. That, you know, if God is telling you to get into one of those or to grab one of those, it's going to bless you. So I encourage you to be faithful and obedient. It is through that God is going to do miracles, wonders, signs in your life. That is just a God that we serve. Do not limit him to your way of thinking, your fleshly way of thinking. Take God out of the box within your mind. Uh, so I'm always praying for you. I love you all and I'll talk with you in the next message.